Hey everybody, this is Eric Worre and welcome to our latest Million Dollar Interview. I'm here with Clive Leach and Diana Ross. They live in Sarasota, Florida and also in the United Kingdom. Yes? Mainly yes. in the United Kingdom. Mainly in the United Kingdom. Yeah. And uh, they're dear friends of, friends of ours, Marina and myself. And we're making a little bit of an exception because typically people have to make a million dollars in a year, in a calendar year, in order to be eligible for this interview. However, we're making an exception for a couple reasons. Reason number one is their top two in their company, major company. Reason number two is they're almost at a million and have been at almost a million for a long time. Yes? Yep. Uh, reason number three, how many customers do you have in your organization? Approximately. 178,616. Approximately. Approximately. That's a lot of <laughs> customers that, that their organization, with all their leadership, have gathered over the years, a tremendous amount. And also, uh, they've earned approximately $14 million yeah. in commissions lifetime. Okay, so all of those things combined, they qualify as a million-dollar interview. $14 million, huge customer base, huge organization, top two in their company. They're doing tremendously well. So thank you for being here. I appreciate it. It's great to be here. It's yeah, great. good. Yeah. Clive, why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell everybody your little little bit about your background, um, where you come from, and how you got introduced to network marketing? Okay. Um, as a young boy, um, I was raised by my parents, thank goodness. Uh, the, uh, we come from a middle class background, I suppose. I was educated at a good school. I was lazy at school. Um, I was only inspired in English and uh, geography and history, which I did well in. The rest was awful. Particularly, I was bad at maths, but I solved that problem by marrying a mathematician, um, <laughs> which is a good way of delegating. And then um, I went into the textile trade. And whilst I was in the textile trade, I got exposed to network marketing. Funny enough, in America, um, I was traveling for my company. Uh, I was on my own. I went in a bar for a nightcap, and these two American gentlemen said, oh, you're from Australia, I can tell by your accent. So I corrected their mistake, and uh, then they showed me the power of leverage. And when I saw the power of leverage, I was blown away. It made immediate sense to me. Um, and I went back to the UK, things happened in my life, various things happened in my life, and a network marketing opportunity came along, and I joined. And um, that's really how I got involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when, was, when did you join first? Oh, gosh. Um, 86. 86, would it be? Okay, she knows that. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, it's a long time ago. Um, and we, I've been in a, a number of different companies. Uh, Dan and I are with our company now for 19, 19 years. years. Um, the rest you know, didn't work out for whatever reason. But love the industry. Mm. Absolutely passionate about the industry. I couldn't do anything else. I certainly couldn't go and be corporate anymore. Um, just not my bag at all. Um, what else do you need to know? Well, that, well that, that's it. good for a start. Let's hear, let's hear your um, story. Okay, well, my story is very different to Clive's. I um, was brought up by a mum and dad who, unfortunately, um, they loved me, but they didn't love each other. And the marriage went on for about 11 years, and it was a very difficult marriage, a very noisy marriage, and occasionally a very violent marriage. And eventually my mum and dad split up when I was 11. And there was just mum and I, and we really had no money. I mean, we were poor, dad left us with nothing. So I, at a very early age, was uh, very independent. Um, when it became legal in the UK to work as a, as a school girl at the age of 14, I literally pounded the streets for six weeks, six weeks in and out and in and out of shops asking for work. And uh, eventually, eventually, after about six or seven hundred no's, somebody said yes. And, um, and you know, I started earning my money. And I so sort of realized at a young age that, you know, if it was going to be, it was up to me. You know, I had nobody else to rely on. Um, I worked very hard, 16 going through 18 at school, did really well at school and was offered a, a university place. But, you know, 
since the age of 11, all I ever wanted to do was, was be an adult, be a grown up and have my own family. I was obviously goal setting, but I didn't realise it. And um, I turned the university place down. My mum was absolutely horrified. My teachers were horrified, you know. They all warned me that um, I would never be successful in life if I didn't go to university. But it just wasn't on the agenda. You know, there was just one thing on the agenda, a family and marriage. And um, the following year, I met a guy and fell in love. And by the time I was just 22, David came into my life. That was uh, over 38 years ago. And I think that was the first time in my life that I realised um, that I had a purpose in life. Um, he was my life. He was my why in life. And um, I didn't want to leave that little lad for, for, for one minute. So I did what a lot of mums did. I started working uh, at night. I was doing eight jobs. I was working in bars, in clubs. Um, I was taking in lodges. I was selling cars from home. You know, you name it, I did it. Because that was the only way I could... I could sort of see a, um, a way through to earning the sort of money that I wanted to earn to give the kids, to give Dave the best start in life. Um, and then um, when Paul came along five years later, um, because again, I didn't want to leave these guys in the day. I wanted, you know, to spend all my time with them. I, um, I did have to take on a Saturday job as well. So that was almost like a ninth job, selling washers and dryers in an in a, in a electrical shop. And um, and, I, and I did very well, um, but I always felt that there was a better way. I, I just had this feeling, and, and I'm a great believer that there's other women out there who feel like I felt that there's another way. But it sort of went to the back of my mind. Um, and then when Paul was three and Dave was 11, um, I had twins. And it was very sad because they were premature and I only had the little ones for, for 24 hours. And that was absolutely devastating for me. But the only thing that came out of that experience for me that was good was it, it made me realize how life could be short. I never thought of life as just being 24 hours. I thought of life as being, you know, 80, 90, 100. And what it did is it put an urgency then to find this something that was out there. I had to find it. And I started reading newspapers. I started listening to radios. I started watching the TV. I was looking at leaflets. I was just looking, looking, looking. And um, one day I, um, I got a letter of congratulations, congratulating me on turning over a million pounds worth of electrical products. And I got to the equivalent of a $15 um, Macy's voucher. And that really... That really annoyed me because it made... That wasn't the word you that, wanted to that say. That wasn't the word I was going to say, but I'm on camera. <laughs> that, that, just, that just made me realise to these guys that was all I was worth. And I knew I was worth more than that. And I started just looking. And it was really strange because I was going home that particular night and I was literally at this crossroads, a, a little bit like um, the film, Eric, I don't know if you've seen Sliding Doors, mm -hmm. Gwyneth Paltrow gets on, one mm -hmm. thing happens, she doesn't get on the uh, underground, nothing happens. And um, I decided to turn right instead of going straight home. I end up at a friend's house. She's got a video there about network marketing. It's uh, just waiting to go in the trash because she was like, she just thought that is going in the crap. You know, that that is... That doesn't exist. That That's just made up. I took it home. I watched it. And very like Clive, I saw that power of duplication, that 5, 25, 1, and it just got to me. That was it. And I think I've always looked upon it as a gift. And that's how I got involved in network marketing. Mm. What's interesting when you, when you tell your stories is talking about a couple moments that defined yeah. your drive. Yeah. You know, when dad left without, and, there, and the family had no money, Correct. you decided, okay, and then some people would take that a different way. Yeah. Some people would become a victim. Yep. Some people would, would not go knock on 700 <laughs> shops door to get a job. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then when you lost the babies, yep. um, deciding that there was urgency, time, life was precious. Absolutely. Needed to be able to go out there and do some things. Yeah. You know, we talk a, a lot about this idea of, turning your worst day into your best day. You know, these these bad days yeah. somehow turned out, if you apply the right meaning to them, yeah. to be extraordinary. So how did you connect? I mean, so you guys had these separate paths in the profession yeah. and and then you oh, connect. I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. No, no, I'll, I'll stop. stop. Uh, okay. Eric, <laughs> I'll stop. Okay. 
So I, I see this video, I see these guys, just ordinary people earning extraordinary amounts of money. And here's the thing, I never for one minute doubted that it wasn't true. I just figured out that, okay, I'll go find these guys, okay, and I'll just do what they do, and I'll earn this money. <laughs> Nobody told me anything else, but the problem for me was finding a sponsor. I called the company, they said, you have to find a sponsor. So I'm looking through the papers, I find somebody that's doing a party, uh, probably three, four weeks later, and you've got to imagine this lady, lovely lady, but she sold product, never recruited anyone in her life. So I bound across the room into this party. I said, hi, my name's Diana Ross and I want to join your business. And she looks horrified. She doesn't know what to do. And so she calls her upline and they don't have any of these application forms. And they call their upline and they don't have any of these application forms. And finally, they call the guy at the top and he has some application forms. But what Alison didn't realize when she came back 24 hours is that I'd already, be, I'd already been out there with this video. I mean, I was running around the streets like a maniac. I was just like, you know, you've got to do this. She's full of excitement. I hadn't got a clue what I was talking about, but I got this concept of 525. Didn't quite get the concept of they shouldn't all go front level. So you know what was happening. I had this huge front level. And um, Alison would um, sort of ring me up every so often and say, Diana, would you, would you mind coming along to a, would you mind popping along to a training? And I'm like, yeah, I haven't got time for this. Th thanks, but no thanks, phone down. And I'm out there recruiting. Okay, it's, it's my turn. And it's his turn, sorry. Okay. So he no, can no, now it's, tell it's the next bit. Okay. It's your turn. So I'm at home, my phone rings, and there's this lady called Alison in there, and a sweet lady, always good at moving products, never recruited anybody in her life. She said, I did a party last night. I said, great, how was it? She said, well, this weird woman came in late and, and just walked up to me and said, I'm not here to buy anything. Sign me up as a distributor. So I said, what's the problem? She said, I had no application form. So I said, well, I've got like, plenty. Come to the house, da, da, da. So that was that. The following day, yeah, the following day, Alison rings me again. You know that woman? Yeah, I've just come from her house. She wants six more forms. I said, well, great. Come up the house, get some blah, blah, blah. Two days later, she's on the phone again. And I said, look, Tell us to order direct, okay? So that's that. And then at the end of the month, I get my commission statement, and I'm scrolling down the commission statement, and I see this name, Diana Ross. Well, it kind of lifts from the page, and by the side of it was the qualifying volume for that month. And most people have done a couple of thousand pounds worth of business to qualify. Diana had done 42,000 pounds worth of volume in her first month. So I thought, I'll give her a call. Yeah, so, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, hey, well done. So we had this conversation. Do you want to pick it up from there? Well, I get this conversation from this guy. And I'm thinking, he sounds really nice. Because he's telling me, he's praising me how well I've done. And Eric, nobody had ever done that in my life. You know, when I got these 30 application forms from the company, I just thought, oh, that's one a day. Because nobody told me otherwise. I didn't know I'd done particularly well, but there's this person telling me how special I was and he just really lifted me. And when I put that phone down, I actually wanted to go out and do the same thing. That's why I think phone work is so important. Mm -hmm. And um, so to cut a long story short... Um, My turn. Your turn. Okay. So Alison rings me up and says, Diana, I said, yes, I've seen the figures, are remarkable. I said, I have a problem. I said, what is it? She said, well, her and her team are moving product but there's no duplication. Nobody's recruiting anybody. So I said, well, get her to training. She said, she won't go. Doesn't see the value in it. So I'm saying, right, let's have a home meeting. Alison had a nice house. So get honest people in your front room. And so I turn up, there's about 30 people there sitting on the floor and you know, I've got this whiteboard and I'm spinning the circles, you know the game. And in walks this woman late and it's Diana. And she walks through the floor and I'm blown away. That's it. Boom. I'm gone. Your turn. And I was the same. I just walked in and thought, <laughs> wow. And, you know, for those of the... So uh, cute. The, Aren't they cute? You know, it They're was so just cute. love at first sight. Yeah. And you know that feeling. I do. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I do. And it's like, we just got to be together. And it happened real <laughs> fast, didn't it, really? Really? It was just ridiculous. We just said, we want to spend... I mean, it must have been a week, two weeks after we met. Um, might have been a month. We want to spend the rest of our lives together. So, hey. Fringe benefit of network marketing. Absolutely. We just yeah. walked away. <laughs> Find a like-minded person. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so we went to start building a business, didn't we? 
we just knew that we had the skills. We knew we could do it together. He was an awesome mentor um, for me. And we just started... I think we complimented each other too. Yeah, I think yeah. we did too. You know? Yeah, I, I know these guys a little bit. <clears throat> I'll tell you what I see in them. Diana is one of the world's best promoters. She is amazing. The, it, it, you talk about the idea that that first month she went out and promoted that opportunity. She she gets something in her mind to promote, whether it's an event, it's a concept, it's a strategy, it's a recognition program, it's a tool, whatever it is. She's very, very good. Clive is incredible at providing training and providing uh, kind of vision and leadership within the organization. Um, some... Um, Wait, yeah, gravitas. You know? Gravitas. That's, yeah, the that's old what I was looking man, for. The old man behind. Not the old man. <laughs> not the old man. But but you know what I mean. Yeah. You have fun. You got a great sense of humor. You have fun. But people realize that this isn't some fly by night thing. Yeah. When they come in and they meet the two of you, they re they they feel the substance in the opportunity. Yeah. And it's so interesting because <clears throat> I I first was introduced to the United Kingdom. When it came to network marketing in 1992, um, and back then there was some oh. pretty heavy perceptions. Oh, yes. oh, it was tough. Heavy, heavy. I know there's perceptions everywhere in the world. Yeah. But there's very. It's like this isn't proper. This isn't. This isn't Correct. normal. Correct. Um, this is that American thing. Correct. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and uh, and and to see where it's come now, you know. And I've been to your conference and your company and. United Kingdom, an amazing amount of people, so much, you know, where where dignitaries from, you know, royal offices are showing up <laughs> and, and talking about how good you, you guys are doing and all those different kinds of things. It's changed so much. Yeah. Um, but let me ask you a question. What makes you different? Because, and it's probably different for both, answer for, for both of you, because... You can't just say it's because, well, my dad left when I was 11 or I lost the twins. You can't and you can't just, you know, point to this or this or this, because frankly, a million people have had similar situations. Somehow you've turned it into 14 million dollars when other people didn't turn it into 14 dollars. You know, they've uh, they had the same opportunity, same situation, same, mm. same, op same uh, 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 situations uh, in front of them. To be able to take advantage of, and they didn't. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what I'm what I'm really interested in is what's the difference? What separates the million dollar earners from the hundred thousand dollar earners? What separates those people from the people who make a thousand dollars a month? What separates those from the people who come in, stay for ninety days, and then quit? What, what's the di what, what do you think separates you from even other leaders within the profession? I think, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's hard work, um, but I would say that one thing that I do um, is I always do just one more. I've always just done one more for 27 what years. What does that mean? Just one more. So you've worked really hard consistently throughout the day and you're tired and all you want to do is, you know, sleep. You're tired. I just do one more call. Just one more prospect. Just one more customer call, just one more distributor call. And I've done just one more, 365 days for 27 years. And I think that has massively impacted my results. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, Eric? totally. You know, that just one more um, consistently. I I'm incredibly consistent, you know, unless I've spoken to you know five six seven distributors a day unless i've spoken to two three four prospects a day i can't sleep mm. you know it doesn't matter where i am in the world i have to do that it's in my blood mm. um and i think that you know going back in sort of 90 to 90 when i got involved as you say eric everybody was i was almost out to prove people wrong sure you know i never hear the word no most people said no. Most people do say no. I think they do say no today. I, I just don't hear that word. And I think that comes from me being a young girl. Uh, I never, ever focus on rejection. Never. I just focus on what I have to do to get there. Mm. I am not the best trainer. I don't think you need to be the best trainer. I give myself maybe six, seven out of ten as a trainer. I'm not the best customer gatherer. Maybe six, seven out of ten for customer gathering. Um... 
I'm not the best recruiter, maybe six, seven out of 10. But I learned very early on that if you become the best promoter of events, and he taught me that because when he had that room full of my team, you should have seen, that was back in 1990, what happened to my, it just exploded. So I would call him literally every night, Clive, I've got 10 people in the front room, I need you. And that's how I learned to He become, didn't mind. He Not didn't mind. At all. He didn't mind. I think he had other ideas, but you know, so night after night after night, I had this guy, he was my upline, I had him working and he was a better trainer than me. But who cares? Mm -hmm. I could promote better than he could. So it, we, we really gelled. And I think it's just going that, that consistency and every day and every day. And even though we earn the money now, we can sit on the beach and do nothing. It's in our blood. And I want yeah. to see people succeed. I want to talk about that for a second because I love the idea of just one more. I love, you know, consistently doing a little bit more than average. Correct. You know, because what are average people make in network marketing? Nothing. You have to be above average. Yeah. You have to be extraordinary. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you need to like people. <clears throat> and you need you to like really, people. really like people. I, don't, mm. I, I, I got into Jim Rohn early on. Mm. Okay. And there was something that Rohn said that just went boom in me. And he, and he talked about philosophy, the, the philosophy um, of enlightened self interest, which means, you know, if you help a lot of people get what they want, you will get what you want. And I found that to be absolutely true. And I like people. I like being around people. I like having fun with people. Um, I don't like being around miserable people. But I love having fun with people, mm -hmm. which is why I like Eric and Marina, because they're oh, fun. Mm. And I think Sorry, being I able to... The other mm. thing the pair of us have done is we've had some pretty difficult things happen in our life um, over the past 27 years, you know. Yeah, sure. Life happens to us as well. Right. You know... Sickness problems, health issues. Well, I want to before we get to that. I want to okay. ask because I, I do. I, I, I would love to hear that. Yeah. Um, before I, I lose this little window okay. of opportunity to talk about something, when were you comfortable? Uh, when did you become financially comfortable, where you could be done? Uh, you could. You, you've got a well, nice place to live. Seven years. You've well, got. You've got good well, enough income. Our first three years together, which was 1990 to 93, our first company, we worked really, really hard and we, we started did. with nothing, mm -hmm. but we ended up with a very, very modest house, but it was paid for. Sure. You know, it was paid for in three years. Right. Um, unfortunately, <clears throat> that company failed, but we got out of it. Right. We started with another company. We made a lot of money in that company. We were making the equivalent of $100,000 a month. And um, we thought, way, you know, this is, mm -hmm. you know, we were very good with our money. We invested it wisely. Um, we Not saved many people money. Do. No. Well, think, that's really done. That's I really done. I wasn't good at it. She's I think, brilliant. You know, yeah, I'll go out and spend it on a nice dress. But to be able to enjoy that, I need to know I put a little bit of money away. That That's just um, mm -hmm. that's just me, probably from, from the way I was brought up. Sure. And um, so I would probably agree with Clive after about seven years. Of so being in the industry, so I'm going back 20 years so, for me. So, so, so for the last 20 years, you haven't needed to do it for the money. No, that's true. That's true. I mean, we, we could, take the money. We, we, right. We, we could have, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. I, I, the reason why I ask this, I see so many people get involved in network marketing. Maybe they find a situation with momentum. Maybe they find you know, a good company, whatever. And they get to 10000 a month and they're done. Yeah. They get to 5000 a month and they're done. Yeah. Yeah. They get to well, 2000 2, a month, month and, and they're done. They're done. Yeah. Crazy. And they put this little tiny lid on themselves yeah. as far as what's possible. Uh, I, I just want to know what's part of your DNA that causes you to keep going when you don't have to. Keep building when it's not required. For me, I absolutely love to see people achieve extraordinary things. And yeah. for me, it's to see people in it's our the team. Buzz who started literally with nothing, mm -hmm. who maybe are in a job that they really hate, mm -hmm. who've been able now to walk away from their jobs, and who I see now as just incredible leaders. That really does it for me. So it's paying it forward. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it's, it's, you know, you see somebody who, when they, they when you first meet them, you know, they, they walk into a room with their head on the floor, you know, no eye contact, and they're like, wouldn't say boo to anybody. Right. And then you see them develop. And you see them become, and you see a strong work ethic emerge, and soon they are like they walk in a room, and everybody goes, 
oh, that's, you know, yeah, yeah. So and, so. and, you know, and you know you've been a part of that. Yeah. Do a bit of mentoring and a bit of arm round and... Contribution. Yeah, and just because we love people. I, mean, I know it sounds a bit crass, but we really, we really enjoy people. We yeah. love people. Yeah, yeah. Different types of people, different and, backgrounds. You know, there are one or two people I could do without, you know. <laughs> Everybody has that. Yeah, you know, but by and large, you know. Yeah. So it's it's what what's fascinating to me. I what I've seen as kind of a common thread, and I just want to see if it's the same common thread for you, is it's it becomes mostly um, contribution to mm. the world, legacy, purpose, mm. uh, relationship, yeah. family, community, yeah. right? That whole side, and then there's a little piece of competition. It's just a little slice that wants to be at the top. That's there's a me. little slice. There's a little little piece that <laughs> just says, right. says I you know, I got it. I want to get the number one." She's the world's worst loser. Yeah. <laughs> I like to win. Okay, you got me there. So it's okay, I think, competition. So long as all these all these other people are being served in the yeah, process. Yeah, absolutely. It wouldn't just be for the money. I like being number two. Yeah, do you? I do because it means I strive. You gotta drive. You gotta it, drive to be for number it. one. Yeah, so funny. <laughs> if I was number one, where is that to go? That's so interesting. We've been number one in the previous company. We were, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the previous company to that. Yeah. And it gets boring when you're number one, but yeah, when you're number you're two, have somebody to push. You gotta have somebody yeah, to chase, somebody to wind up. Well, but number three is just not acceptable. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I am, you know, I am the. Clive isn't as competitive as me. I, I, I probably drive you crazy sometimes. I, I'm, I'm, I get a huge, huge kick out of people doing well. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I, let's get it right. When I got involved in this industry, I did it for personal need. Sure. Okay, I needed to get out of debt. And there's nothing you know? wrong with that. You know, exactly. And I did that. And then my next goal with Diana was to become financially independent. So we built this wall, yay high, real thick around us and our family, and it's impenetrable. You cannot get through it. So we're done. So here I am, 67 years of age. I know it's hard to believe. And, you know, <laughs> we, we now come from contribution because, you know, my time of life, yeah, I could sit down and do absolutely, sweet, uh, absolutely nothing. Um, but... It's in the blood. You know, it's the only way I can describe yeah, no, it. It gets you. You know, it's just, yeah, right. it just, you know, you know it's. Right. What right. else would I do? Right. We'd be bored. Yeah, yeah. You just. You, I, I, nothing I, to for touch people it. like us, entrepreneurs don't understand the concept of retirement. It doesn't make sense. What, what's retirement? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this doesn't make <laughs> sense. No. What other people do? Well, let, let me ask you. Let me ask you another question. It may be a more personal one. Um, what is? What are some of the benefits? Of network marketing that maybe people don't talk about that much that you you have enjoyed personally. Um, for me, being you know having a father that walked away um, at the age of eleven and leaving my mum and I penniless, I never wanted to have that feeling, you know. So for me, I need to feel secure, and I think. I think that came for me. It really impacted me when in 2012, uh, we were in our home in Sarasota and Clive got a call just like that. You know, we, we really weren't expecting this. He'd had a blood test and um, he only had the blood test because I had been nagging him to have the blood test because all my friends in the USA, the guys have this blood test when they get to 50. So we weren't expecting anything to say he had prostate cancer. And I didn't have to think about that check coming in. Our company paid us. They paid us this month. They paid us the month that he had his operation. Oh, they yeah, paid residual. us during recovery. Yeah. And they've paid us ever since. Mm. And um, that security for me is really, really important, above anything else. And the security for my kids yeah. too. Yeah. Um, How about you, Claire? Oh, it's the same, I think, because, you know, when you get a phone call from uh, your your consultant saying, "Hey, Clive, uh, I've got some news for you. Um, you know, you've got prostate cancer." It kind of takes the edge off the day. Um, and I remember putting the phone down and thinking, "Thank goodness I have a residual income. I don't have to worry about anything. So what do I need to do?" 
Um, I need to cut a video because I was going to be appearing at an event. I'm not going to be able to go. Um, I need to tell Diana. Um, so she came in, been shopping or something. I said, sit down, I've got something to say. Um, and then she said, okay, well, you make the video. And you went out and bought prostate well, cancer I mean, for dummies. If, if, if truth be known, obviously it was a horrific blow to me, but this guy was just so cool and, okay, I'll need to cut a video. I'm, I'm sort of, you know, I can't show my true emotions here. But the, the money side of things... You know, the first thing probably a lot of people would think about is, oh, my goodness, you know, I'm going to have to have some time off work. I'm only going to get three months pay. That didn't even enter into it. Mm. And my reaction was to try and be cool like Clive and let's go get a book on prostate. Figure that out. Figure yeah. it prostate out. Prostate cancer dummies. Great book. Because yeah. Clive and yeah. I <laughs> figure things out. Right. If there's a problem, we figure it out. Mm -hmm. And to us, that seemed the best book. And it was a, it was a great book. Right. We figured it out. <laughs> I love that. Which, uh, Very cool. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I know you've you've got a beautiful family today, and you know, blended family like so many yeah. have. Yeah. Um, and, Grandkids and everything, you know. Yeah, and and uh, and some of your family's involved in the business. David's involved uh, in the business. Which is He's fun. Uh, here for this ladies' event, which yeah. is his favorite event. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when, as we're doing this interview, we're actually at the Most Powerful Women in Network Marketing annual um, conference yeah. that's uh, getting ready to start. So I thought we'd take the opportunity to turn the cameras on. Um, let's do this. Um, why don't each of you, who, you can decide who wants to go first. This audience wants what you have. Okay. They, they, want, they want to be able to, if possible, work with their partner in life. Okay. Yeah. And work that out. That yeah. that's a really cool thing for some people. Some do, some don't necessarily want that. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for those that want it, I mean, that that's one thing that they like: the freedom, the security, the contribution, the purpose. They want to become network marketing professionals. So mm -hmm. what I'd like you to do: whoever wants to go first can go first. Second one can go after that. Just look at the camera and give them some advice. Um, I'll go first. Tell, no, you go first. Ladies first. <laughs> Ladies first. T tell them. Tell them. Um, Okay. If you if you're sitting with them, just you and them, okay. wherever they are in their home, and they want this, and they're looking at you with big eyes, saying, "Well, you know, tell me what to do." You know, what what okay. advice would you have for them? The first thing I want you to do is I want you to look at where you are now in your life, and then I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think about where you would like to be if you could open your eyes and you were gonna be somewhere, what would be that house? What would it look like that you were sitting in? Who would be in there with you, in that home? The people, who is surrounding you? What is the car like that you're driving on the driveway? I want you to think about these thinking. Where are the places that you're gonna be traveling to next week, the week after? What are the hobbies that you can now do because you've, you've made it? So you can go and do those things that you've always wanted to do all your life. I need you to think about that. And then I want you to, Clive, could you pass me that journal? I want you to promise me to write them down. Don't write them down on a piece of paper, write them down in a journal. And I want you to keep that with you every day. Because on this journey that you're going to go on, things are gonna to get tough sometimes. Sometimes, you know, things don't always work out, but you open that up and you look at what you've written down and that will help you get through those tough times. The other thing I want you to do is I want you to start now to think about what you've got to do to achieve these things, okay? Because you've got to go to work. You've seriously got to go to work. You've got to be consistent. It's no good you thinking, you know, for seven days I'm going to do this thing and then I'm going to take three weeks off because the dog's got a headache or, you know, I've got a toothache got to work consistently that is the key so what are you going to work on you've got to work on you you've got to be um, a really good pupil you will become a teacher as well that is important but always remain a pupil I'm still a pupil that's why I'm here at this event you know to meet some incredible ladies I learned so much from from these events Eric that you and Marina put on and um, it's so important that you never stop learning. One of the books that I absolutely must get you to read is GoPro. It is, it is the best book 
I wish it had been around when I'd started. You need to learn those seven skills. And don't just read it once and put it to, to one side. Don't do that. Don't lend it to anyone. Make them buy their own copy. Keep it so that you can refer to those seven skills. And I want you to learn to listen to people. Learn to listen to people and what they want in life. You know, you can't impose your goals on them. And I want you to do those money-making activities every single day. You need to be recruiting people, even at you know our level now. We do it because we get a buzz and because it keeps us, it keeps us in check with grounded. what's going on and it keeps us grounded. And we still gather customers. That's important. That's so important. So we have the two oars going. We're gathering customers. We're recruiting. Um, as I've said to you before, yes, learn to become a trainer, but you don't have to be a 10 out of 10. You know, you have to learn to promote. You have to be at all the events. The company event is the most important. These type of events, that, these generic events that Eric and Marina, they, they change lives. I've seen that happen at these events. You can probably tell I'm incredibly excited. Stay excited throughout this journey. As you're making the journey, people will come through and go on that journey with you. Some people will slide away, but hold that hand out for them because, you know, sometimes they come back. Give them that option. Don't just say, you left me. I don't want to speak to you again. Be there for them. Be there for them. And sometimes they come back. They work at their own pace and understand that. And finally, just go do it. Just go do it. Just go change your life. Well, Dan has pretty well said most things. And this is truth time. Last night, uh, we got this message from Eric saying, uh, hey, we're in town, let's do this video tomorrow. So Dana's immediate reaction was, what am I gonna wear? <laughs> and pointed to me and said, you need a haircut. <laughs> well, yeah. So I reached for my journal and I started writing some notes up about the best advice I can give. Dana's covered this a lot. But one of the challenges I get is when I have a new person in front of me who's just joined and I say, why have you joined? And they say, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Then I know I have to do some digging. I have to get down to a strong reason. Because if you don't have a strong reason, there's going to be some rough days when, you know, it can be a bit uncomfortable. And you need that strong reason to support you. As I mentioned, mine was an issue was to get out of debt, then become financially secure, and then come from contribution. And having a strong philosophy of enlightened self-interest. And having a good plan. Get good at planning. Get good at thinking on paper, using a journal. Because if you have a good plan, that's wonderful. If you don't have a good plan, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to fit into somebody else's plan. And if it's a corporate plan, guess what they've got planned for you? Not much. So you need to have a good plan. You need to make a decision. You need to make a decision to become better. I am a phenomenal car polisher. I, I have this little collection of cars and I'm great at detailing them and polishing them. If I was to do it professionally, people would be coming from miles around to have me polish their cars but it doesn't make me a better person. You have to decide to become better. So you have to decide to work harder on you than you do on your job. This industry is a brilliant disguised personal development program attached to a variety of businesses. But if you work hard on you, get that personal development just 30 minutes a day. You know, reading something good, listening to something good, just 30 minutes a day, don't miss every day, then that would be a great benefit in my opinion. Most people start part-time. So when you're working full-time on your day job and part-time on your fortune, you need to be laser-focused on the money-making activity. That doesn't mean... Oh, a picture on Facebook of a baby, like. Or another one, like. It means doing stuff. It means prospecting, building that rapport, 
getting friendly with somebody, a group. It means inviting, getting people to take a look. It means presenting. It means getting somebody started. And of course, promoting events, absolutely key. Events and seminars are really important. And some are better than others. And the only way you're going to find out is if you go to them all. And finally, get from the day. Keep a journal. I got nagged to death about keeping a journal by two mentors, Jim Rohn being one of them. Another one was when I was in the textile trade. My, my boss nagged me about keeping a good journal. And I've kept one for years and years and years. So you get from the day. It's an invaluable tool. It's my external hard drive. I've learnt to think on paper because it's really difficult for me to think up here. I'm not that bright. But when I write it down, stuff comes crystal clear. I think that's about it from me. <clears throat> well, listen, I want to thank both of you for your friendship. I want to thank you for um, what we're doing together in the network marketing community, yeah. in the profession. I think you're a, a very important part. Your story is a very important part of what we're attempting to do at Network Marketing Pro, which is spreading good ideas mm -hmm. about our profession and and, uh, and giving people a roadmap to be able to get where you figured out how to be, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what's so fun for me is these m people make, making 10 million or more in a career is becoming more and more common. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, when, when we both start, when we the three of us started, it wasn't very common. <laughs> Um, six figures a year was the holy grail back then. Now it's seven. Now it's growing even from there. So it's an exciting time. And um, I want to thank you for this. I want to thank you for your contribution. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank you for what you continue to do when you don't have to. Because that is the mark of somebody who's really coming from a servant heart. So I appreciate it. So, Diana. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, Clive. Thank you. You're the best. Thank you, right? I hope you got value from this, ladies and gentlemen. And our wish for you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional, that you decide to go pro. Because it is a stone cold fact that we do have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.